But Matthew chapter 24, yeah. right. amen. Matthew chapter 40, 24, Father, we thank you for the anointing yeah. that makes teaching, pre preaching, prophesying, laying on hands, casting out devils, whatever you have us to do tonight. We thank you for the anointing that makes it easy. Father, I thank you. Absolutely, God, my, my thoughts, God, my mind, God, God, my lips are clay to say what you have me to say. For this, oh God, we give your name, glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we do pray and everybody say. Amen. Amen. And uh, maybe if you already have Matthew 24 or if you're still finding it, I want you all, I want us to make sure that on our social media platforms that we're sharing Amen. The Bible studies and the Sunday morning services, often as often as we can remember to do so. Amen. Because this, Amen. Social media, uh, whether we know it or not, is a form of evangelism. Amen. 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 Right, amen. amen. Let me say this and make this very clear. Oftentimes, many people have received the word of prophecy, a prophecy that sounded like this: uh, "You're going to preach to many nations, or you're a prophet to the nations." And here it is. Even I myself have been told that, but uh, here it is. God's plan, as far as me being a prophet to the nations, may not be me leaving the U.S. All right. It just may be every time he tells me to open my phone. Yes. We never know who's looking at our pages, who is, is watching what comes out of our mouth. Right. Right. Amen. Because oftentimes we mess up and mis get misconstrued by the journey that Facebook has a, become a part of some of our lives in such a way to where we literally put everything on Facebook. That's right. We put everything on social media. Yeah. Amen. And we wonder why everybody know our business, but that's another conversation for another day. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But the point that I'm making is, amen, if we can talk about our lives, who did this, everything else, amen, I believe that where we're being spiritually blessed, we can put it out there. All right. Amen. Amen. Hold right. on, oh, let me make sure this is working. All right, just in case you get quiet, I can just go over there and touch it. Amen. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter, chapter, chapter 24. And the topic for tonight is very simple, but it's very profound. Uh, the Holy Spirit gave me this uh, around this time last, last night. And mentally, I've been letting it download and be in my spirit. But our topic for tonight is simply entitled, uh, I want to talk to you about Jesus. Can you tell somebody the topic for tonight? Tell them, I want to talk to you about Jesus. Very simple topic, but if you really have your spiritual ears on, it'll bless you. And I want to talk to you about Jesus. Uh, Matthew chapter 24 and I want us to begin reading at verse 37. Matthew chapter 24 verse 37 and it says but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the son of man be but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the son of man be verse 38 for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah, or Noah entered into the ark. And verse 39, and knew not until the flood came, took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Again, I, and because and we're about to actually go to Genesis chapter 6 from here. But I want us to get the first thought that uh, Matthew is letting us know. Matthew is one of four Gospels of the New Testament. Amen. Matthew is letting us know, amen, that the days that are approaching us, the days that we're living in now, will be in close in comparison to the days of Noah. Yes. I want us to make sure that we're really paying attention to the wording of what Matthew is saying. The days, which means the Bible lets us know that uh, Noah, he, his ministry of telling people the same message over and over again of there's going to be a day where it's going to rain, it's going to rain, it's going to rain. He preached that message for 120 years. Imagine preaching the same message for 120 years. Imagine also because I really want us to 
put ourselves in the minds of the Lord by this understanding, and that's this. Not only did he have to preach the same message for 120 years, but he had to do it without the New Testament. <laughs> I, we got to see it. I, I, I really want us to see it. In other words, uh, Noah had to go off of what God gave him, God off of what God said, and he had to believe that alone. For 120 years. Don't worry, I promise you, when, when I get to where we're getting, when we get to where we're getting, I promise you it's going to make sense. Go to Genesis chapter 6 now. Genesis chapter 6. Amen. We're getting to where again the topic is I want to talk to you about Jesus. Amen. Genesis chapter 6, and I want you to look at it. Whether you have your phones, your Bibles, your tablets, whatever, I don't want you to just listen to the scriptures being read. I want you to actually see it. Amen. Amen. I want you to see it. I want your ears and your eyes to be penetrated by the word. Genesis chapter 6. Place one, two, three. Amen. I want just, just I want you to just get to Genesis chapter 6 first and then we'll Amen. we'll we'll work it from there. Amen. 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 Genesis chapter 6. Again, keep the thought in mind that as time is going on, the the the, the statement that we need to understand is that. If we want to better understand, mm. the point of this Bible study is simply this. If we want to better understand the time that we're living in, look at the days of Noah. Yeah. In other words, the objective of what we're going to do tonight is look at the life of Noah yeah. through the lens of what we know up to this point. Yeah. One of the things that I have been letting us know in Bible study is if you want to better understand where you are in life, you need to find, the Bible says he is the reward of those that diligently seek him. So guess what? What better way to seek God than in his word? So, in other words, now you can tell God in your time of prayer, God, your word said, da 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 Yeah, so if I want to understand where I am in time, according to the scripture, I got to look for it. Somebody say look for it. Look for it. Amen. Look where, look at what the Bible is saying about your life. This day, March 20th, 2024, there is a scripture that literally can, if you find it. This is why the Bible talks about for us to meditate on his word day and night. Because why, why, why I got to read the Bible every day? Because every day I'm looking in the Word to see exactly where I am. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. That's it. I need somebody to to say, God, show me daily where I am. Show me daily. Show me daily where I am. That's right. Thank you, God. Yes. Where I am. Matthew is letting us know from Matthew's perspective. If you want to understand what the end of time will look like, you must go to the beginning. Yes. If you want to understand the end, you must first look at the beginning. Oh, my Bible scholars and theologians, if you really understood the statement, the Bible says that there is no new thing that's under the sun. Nothing that has happened up to this point is unaware by God. That's right. That's right. So what better way to understand now than to see? Let's look in the Bible and see exactly where we are. Genesis chapter 6. Because I really want to get through certain points so that if there are questions uh, and if you have comments, amen, don't draw it out too long. Amen, because we want to open up more room for questions. And speaking of, I'm going to open up my phone so I can be able to see what you all are saying online as well. Amen, because even those of you who are watching, if you have questions online, amen, we want to answer your questions. Amen. Amen. So Genesis chapter 6 
And where I want to begin reading, amen. Uh, let's look at uh, da, 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 Amen. Let's look at verse 10. Let's look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 10. All right. Now, what we know up to this point in Scripture is uh, God and Noah, there's a conversation that happens. Right. And God is letting Noah know, hey, I don't like what I'm seeing on the earth. I repent of it. We all know of those of us who have been to Sunday school and the Bible study and been to church. We all know about Noah. So I'm not going to really go so deep into it, but there are certain points I want to draw from it. We all know that uh, uh, God saw evil on earth just like today. Because even though certain scriptures we're not going to read, but I need us to really mentally do the comparison. The Bible just said that people were also drinking and getting married. Remember what we just read in Matthew 24. So what is that saying? People were, watch this, were focused on self-accomplishments. But also having a feeling of dopamine. Right. Prophet, what are you talking about? Whenever uh, this, oh, I know I'm going to get in trouble. No, I, I ain't got the time to do it. I, I, listen, uh, 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 what we must understand is, uh, oh, Jesus. The Bible says they were drinking and getting married. In other words, uh, they were having a good time because let me say this and make this very clear and we can discuss it at another time, not tonight, and that's this. The Bible does not say that drinking is a sin. But what the Bible does let us know is to be drunk is a sin. So the question is, how, when are you able to say enough is enough? Or I can't handle it. Now the point is not about alcohol, but the point is, the point is, uh, what are we self-indulging in? What are we indulging in so much to where now it takes up the majority of our time? That's right. That's the Bible, I, I, we got to see the comparison. Amen. Again, the Bible is saying that in the days of Noah, they were getting drunk and they were being married. So in other words, they were having a good time, but they were also looking for love. Love was the focus. In other words, uh, 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 people, instead of for 120 years, people made the decision that instead of me focusing on God, I'm going to focus on the alcohol represents having a good time, and being married means I'm, I'm pursuing somebody other than, thank you, that's the one I'm trying to make. So the question is now, what, where does most of our time go on the daily? What is your focus? Yeah. I'm not saying you can't get married because here it is. Noah was married, mm -hmm. but it had to be done in God's timing oh, according to. Oh, yeah. oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. So they were getting drunk and getting married. In that time, there were giants in the earth. I really ain't got time to go there. Uh -huh. yeah. But the Bible lets us know that there was uh, 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 giants upon the earth in those days. And there were people, uh, sons and daughters coming together and multiplying to making children. And what time? And what what time are we in right now? Where everybody, it seems like everybody is focused on uh, having a good time, getting married, having children, whatever feels good. That's what I'm going to lean towards. So it sounds like the people of that time operated more in their flesh than in their spirit. And because of that, it grieved God's spirit. And in verse 5 it says in God, in Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 it says that God saw the wickedness of the man was great in the earth yes. and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Yes. Jesus. Amen. Amen. So in a sense what we have to understand is that we can look at today's world and be like oh but it's so evil in the world. It, this, this isn't anything new. The heart of man has always been this evil. The minds of man has always been this evil. If Noah was still alive, he would look around and be like, oh, same situation, different time. We're getting somewhere, because I promise you this isn't where we're looking to, 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 to stop. So God 
just like in that day, he said, it repented me that I made man. Yeah. And he decided, I'm going to destroy the earth with water. Now we know, he ends up saying that the next time I destroy the earth, it's going to be on fire. That's fine. Prophet, what are you saying? The closer and the more that we see the signs of the days of Noah in today, the closer we are to seeing the world be on fire. In other words, the judgment of God. In other words, the return of Christ. So let's look at verse 10, because now I want to move quickly to, to, to my points. Uh, 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 or actually, I want to begin reading at verse 8. Verse 8 is now where we want to really dig into this thing. Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. Noah walked with God. And he walked with God, and, and, and Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth, was, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Jesus. And God looked upon the earth, and, be, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shall thou make in the ark, shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Now we're not getting into uh, 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 the type of wood and everything he used, or, or the cubic feet and things of that nature, but I do want us to keep it in our mind. God gave Noah certain instructions. Yeah. That's it, that's it. Just like in this day that we're living in now, God every week has given us in certain instructions of what we need to do and how we need to live yes, yes. to prepare for the end of time. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And what God would have us also see, and if I don't read any more scripture tonight, you can't say I didn't read scripture. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Noah, a couple of different things happened, and now I'm going to go to my notes, and, 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 and we're just going to go from here. Uh, 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 Noah had to step out on a certain place of faith. All right. All the Bible right. says that without faith it is impossible to please God. So what that tells me is if I love who I serve, I want to please them. So what that tells me is God being pleased is equal out to me having faith in him. Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So if I want to please God, ultimately the statement is, if I want to please God, I need an increase of his word. Let me say this, and this is where we're about to go to another level, and that's this. Not only do I need an increase of word, but what I say out my mouth needs to represent him as well. Again, the topic is, let me talk to you about Jesus. The subtopic is, let me talk to you about Jesus. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And the issue is, is that Noah had to go around, really listen to the statement now, Noah had to go around 120 years talking a faith on a level that people could only understand if they were obedient. For 120 years, I keep telling you, this is what you need to do, this is what God is showing me, this is the level of faith that I need to operate in, that this is what God is getting ready to do. Good, bad, and indifferent, I have faith in what he said. But the thing about it is certain doors open for us and certain things happen around us when we talk about his name. When we talk about what he said, when we talk about the faith that we have in God, no one had to go and buy the gopher wood. I want to make certain points tonight. He had to go and get the gopher wood to watch this. Do something that nobody had ever seen before. Yeah. Nobody has ever seen rain come from 
the sky up to this point in Genesis. So now for 120 years, I got to preach to you about faith. For 120 years, all I'm doing every time I come into the house of God, every time I come to Bible study, every time I open up my word, I am getting another level of faith. And for 120 years, Noah kept just trying to lift up their faith by giving him the word. For 120 years, I keep giving you the same word. And here it is. Noah is telling them, hey, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. He went and bought the gopher wood. He went and bought certain tools to make the ark. And he went and bought it. The Bible doesn't let us know that anybody brought him the money, but he did it on his own dime. All right, all right, all right, all right. There are certain points I want us to see. In other words, there's a level of faith that God would have us to walk in to where even when we go to certain places like Noah had to, he had to go to a place and buy an abundance of something just because God said it. What is so proper? What's the point that you're making from that to today? In other words, if there's something that God is telling you to do and you know he told you to do it, when he says, now go, just go. The Bible says that God told Noah, go to the store. In other words, let me, let me, let me, let me put it in 2024. Go down to uh, Hobby Lobby. Go down to Home Depot. Buy this wood, buy this, and guess what? Uh, if, if, if somebody happens to ask you, why are you buying it? Say because God told me. I'm pretty sure that some of the merchants that were there where he bought the wood and supplies of the ark, I'm pretty sure that they asked him, well, what are you doing this for? Why do you need all this wood? Why do you need all this? See, don't be surprised if whenever God tells you, go, now go talk to the realtor. Don't be surprised if God tells you, I, no, I don't care if you don't qualify for that house in the community, in the gate of community. Go inside, talk to this person, tell them this is what you're looking for, don't shoot low. See, this is the time frame where we have to put Jesus at his word. Though Noah had to wait 120 years, I'm pretty sure 120, many of us can't wait an hour and 20 seconds or an hour and 20 minutes. 120 years of just doing things by faith. In other words, in order for us to make it in the end times, we have to have end time faith. Yeah, my faith got to be on a thousand. That's why I got to be in my word. This is why this Bible study series happened in the time frame that it happened. This is why uh, uh, oftentimes we hear preachers say it, that, oh, well, whoever was supposed to be here, that was here. And I believe that there is a set people for a set time. And let me say this and hope that three people give God glory, and that's this. Uh, not only did God take care of who was obedient to the word, but God took care of Noah's family as well. Also, what that's telling me is that if I do right by God, God will make sure that he and his will is done in my family's life. Okay, got it. Noah had to have such faith in God and such trust in God to where God, I will focus only on having faith. That's right. Jesus, thank you, Lord. To the point where everything else that concerns me, this child is going through this, this family member going through this, this didn't happen. Oh God, this happened, this happened. Yes, yes. It don't look good. But I can't allow what's happened to phase my faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's why I need the word every day. As I, as we continue to go through this, the Holy Spirit gave me this last night. He said, many of us, we're used to safe, 
safe faith moves. Many of us, we are used to safe, uh, safe faith moves. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, Pastor Michelle used, uses this uh, example often that uh, if I put a chair in front of you and I say, uh, have faith that this chair can hold you up, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think twice about it. You would just say, oh, okay, no problem. But if I tell you that there is a chair there, but you can't see it. First of all, because of who told you there was a chair there to support you, you should already believe. And sit down with no problem. Though you can't see it, you should still trust who said it. Oh, I don't think you heard what I said. I said, though I don't see it, I gotta trust who said it. Jonathan, stop it. How, how in the world does a arc, a bolt that's about probably two or maybe three size, three times the time of the size of this building? How does faith produce something that ends up saving him, his entire family, animals? His obedience to God and his ability to step out of what he could not see. Okay, again, I told you that we're going to look at the life of Noah, but with the knowledge that we have up to this point. You, you, you do remember when uh, Jesus was out on the water and the disciples were in the boat. Now here's what I love so much about this. All the disciples either could decide to believe that who was out standing on that water, they had three ways of believing. The first way was by hearing his voice. I, we ain't got time to get into it and look at the scripture, but read it in your leisure. Uh, when Jesus was out on the water, they saw him, they heard him, but then one disciple decided to take it a step further and say, let me step on water. And I'm going to step on, watch this, catch it, catch it. I'm about to, in Jesus' name, step on what don't make sense. By faith of who I know is sitting right here on this water, talking to me, looking at me, I'm about to step out. Hold on, if you're really who you say you are, and if you're able to step on this water, I believe you so much to where I'm willing to do something that is not in the script. I'm willing to do something that nobody's ever heard of. And I'm going to step outside. Listen, you guys are satisfied with just seeing his, uh, his, seeing his glow and hearing his voice. No, I'm about to step on what he's stepping on. Because my Bible tells me that greater works shall I do because he has gone to the Father. Now, I'm not suggesting for any of us to go out on some water talking about, Lord, bid me to walk. Now, I'm going to tell you now, I cannot swim, so do not call Jonathan. Don't you try. I, I, I can't. Now, I told him, Brother German, earlier, I can't swim. Don't none of you FaceTime me or message me talking about, Prophet, you told me to jump on the water. No, 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 I didn't. No, I, I had nothing to do with that. The point that I'm making is uh, 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 Peter had the, and let me say this, what I love so much about faith is God will give you a faith that you don't, that you didn't even think of, but the fact that it came to your mind, you got to know it came from God. What's the point that I'm making? The Bible says God will do exceedingly, abundantly, above, watch it, all that you can ask or think. So if he's giving you a big vision, a big dream, a big revelation, and you may have never seen it done before, guess what? The fact that it's possible is because I, I've never seen it happen. Hallelujah. I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man what God is getting ready to do. 
So there are some things that God would tell us to do in this time and season that we've never seen before. And watch this. It's not just pertaining to blessings, but it's pertaining to our walk with God. The Bible said Noah walked with God. And let me say this to make this very clear. Because yes, we're talking about end time, but I also want you to see uh, the blessing part and the faith part and even the money part and because that's this. Watch this. Even in Noah being obedient and buying the wood and buying the supplies, watch this. God, he had to have enough faith in God to know that as I'm running up this bag, as I'm running up this bill at this place and buying all this stuff, I got to know that God's going to reimburse me. I, you have to remember there was a lot of time in 120 years. A lot of time to think, Brother Joseph. A lot of time to even say, God, what are we doing now? And let me say this to make this very clear. Noah had no idea when it was about to rain. We now know from reading the scripture that it was 120 years prior from the time God told Noah originally. But Noah did not know that. Let me say this to make this very clear. The Bible lets us know that no man knows the day nor the hour when God is going to come back. See, what I'm doing biblically is I'm putting together that time and this time so we can really understand what's going on. As Noah went, as Noah lived life, as Noah did certain things, he walked with God, but he exemplified faith. He walked with God, but he exemplified faith. In other words, let me say this. Noah had to walk in a place of, 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 of being at the, 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 the right health to be able to climb up and grab certain things. You understand what I'm saying? So as we look at that life, we have to see that this is why God is bringing up certain things in our spirit and bringing it up on our jobs and through a, a, a podcast, certain things that we hear. It's not by coincidence. God is throwing certain subliminal messages to us each and every day, but we have to have the spiritual eye to see it. So much God has been getting on to us about eating right. We talked about it last week. And getting into certain habits, not eating at certain times of the night. Because you never know what God is doing now is preparing you for five years from now. We never know what's about to happen next. Something, God, help me tonight. Uh, something could happen, not to bring about fear, but something could happen in the government tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That could change the whole way of life. Oh, yeah. And God has been preparing us since Jump Street, having us to hear certain things, wondering, God, why am I hearing this on repeat? And all of a sudden, you wake up and look at the news and you see why, oh, that's why he was preparing me. I wasn't going to say it a second time, but I'm going to repeat what Pastor Michelle said this Sunday and make something very clear. Uh, me and my brother, we thought we still had health insurance. Do you understand what I'm coming from? We thought we still had health insurance until we found out that we had uh, outgrew. Hey, watch this. Watch, watch, watch. We outgrew our safe space. God, what if pops? God, what if something happened? Guess what? The same faith I had for everybody else when they got sick. Oh, I just was like, you know, I wish somebody would get on their feet and bless God. The same faith I had for other people when they got sick and this and the third. God forbid, if I happen to get sick, the same scripture I use for everybody.
We got a few moments left. I'm closing. Amen. My notes. Stop being used to safe faith moves. All right. All right. Thank you, Jesus. And I mentioned that here. Yeah, just like Peter, I believe that God is calling us to step out on some things. Again, even Noah had to step out. I remember saying that I want to say it was Sunday school this past Sunday, and that's this. I never, God never told us that our faith moves wouldn't be scary. God never told us that every faith move will be a confident one. But our moves must, watch this, but they must be confident. Because I'm in, see, our mind got to switch. Because I'm making this, this step in faith, it is a safe step. I dare somebody, wherever you are, stand around the room, I dare you to take three steps just in front of you. I need you to do something in the next shot. I want you to do something spiritual. Because I'm taking the step in faith, it's, it is a safe step. And watch this, it's safe, watch me, it's a safe step, not because I know in my mind it's going to work out, but because of who told me. Let me help us, because this is not supposed to be a hype Bible study. I need us to really understand that when God tells us to do a thing, when he tells us to go sign up for this scholarship, go sign up for the, for the, for the building, go get the apartment, go get the car. I'm telling you that everything in your mind is going to tell you God didn't say it. That's what I'm trying to get us to see. But the more that you talk about Jesus, even in the midst of the situation, even in the midst of whoever you got to walk around throughout the daily going to where God told you to go, you and I have to talk so much about him. Let it come out your mouth. When people be like, how you doing today? Hey, you know, the Lord got me. It's just me and Jesus. And you, you ain't got to say it like me. Say it however you want to say it. But you cannot allow your confession to change. We cannot allow our confession to change. God's timing is not our timing. So in exchange for worrying about time, God wants us to focus on having and building our faith. It's not enough to just have faith or have a level of faith. But our desire every day, God, build my faith. God, build my faith. Because again, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if your desire is to please God, you need more faith. It's just that simple. It's not rocket science. God, I want to please you. The Bible says I need faith. So God, help me increase my faith. Every time I open up the word, every time I hear the word, God, I need you to give me a revelation. I need you to tell me what you're saying. Why? Because that same power, watch me, that same power, let me say what I said last week, the same resurrecting power. I don't just use it for the building. I'm going to take that with me outside. Take that same faith where God dealt with you in-house, in your room, at your kitchen table, in your car while you were sitting in your car by yourself. Why am I saying that Noah? Because what I'm suggesting is that Noah didn't just have to live a life as he believes God, but his confession everywhere he went was, I believe God. Why? Because he kept preaching the word of God, that God's coming back. The more, so the point I'm making is this, the more we talk about God, the more that we talk about Jesus, the more that we take interest in witnessing and talking more about him than, than other things. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. 
the more that we put our focus on him, the more that certain doors will open up for us. Amen. Amen. The more that people will see our lives. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people tell me that you don't even know how much just you coming over and doing this or whatever, or talking to me on the phone for a few moments, you never know what that did, what that does for people. I've had people tell me many times, man, all you did was play the keyboard, but that gave me every answer that I was praying about. And I'd be like, all I did was play this little light of mine. What you mean that it blessed your whole life? I don't understand. Our life is to represent Jesus. Our life is to represent him. So the more that we push him, the more he'll push us. Again, 120 years of saying the same message, 120 years preparing an ark, 120 years having to go and find all the animals and find a male and female of this animal, that animal, that animal, that animal, that animal, that animal. That animal. Wow. That's what I'm trying to do. 120 years. 120 years of obeying God and walking with God.
ears. As we close, again, our topic again for tonight was, let me talk to you about Jesus. Let me say this and make this very clear. I am no longer accepting the, the phrase, uh, oh, this is only the beginning. I no longer accept that phrase, Brother German, when people come to me and be like, oh, well, yeah, you know, what God has for you, bro, oh, yeah, this is only the beginning. No, it's not. <laughs> You're not going to put me where I graduated from. All right. You got to really hear the statement. That's right. Because I know some people, they mean it in a good way, mother. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, this is only the beginning for your business, for this and the third. This is only the beginning. Amen. No, it it's not only the beginning. You're not going to unintentionally put me back in time. No, no, no. Now, in the last 10 years, when I actually started, I, don't, I thank God for what I learned, but I'm not going back. That's right. I'm pretty sure by the time that Noah got to year 100, year 101, year 102, I wish somebody would come to me and talk about this only in the beginning. No, you're trying to take me back 100 years. Oh. I waited. I had faith. Now I'm waiting on manifestation. I have been working, I've been waiting, I've been listening to God, I've been going back and rereading what he told, what he told me, what he gave me. Now this ain't all in the beginning. I, and here's where I praise God on this statement. I'm more closer to the end than the beginning. Why should I praise God? Because watch this, let me say this, I hope everybody catch it. The Bible says that God is the author and finisher. I am no longer operating in the beginning stages of faith. But I believe that the faith I have right now is setting me up for the end. I need you to tell somebody the faith I have right now is setting me up for the end. So the worse that things get, the, the more that things get bad in the, in the earth, it tells me two things that I can celebrate God in. Number one, he's coming back. Yeah. And number two, everything I've been waiting on, God's about to do it. Because watch this. Even in the midst of God judging the world during the time of Noah, yes. God still blessed Noah. Yes. Right. His family was taken care of. Yes. Because his family, his immediate family, were the, were the only ones that made it on the dog on board. Right. They had enough food to last them the entire so what am I saying? I'm telling you that no matter what happens in the economy, if you and I have faith, faith in God, that God is to provide, that God is a keeper, that God is in shelter in the time of storm, whatever happens leading up to his return, God has covered me. I need you to tell somebody I'm covered. Just tell them. Joseph, let me tell you this as we close. Though, because we brought up a personal matter, but it's all good. We are where we are. Though we may not have health insurance, uh -huh. we're still, we still have full coverage. Amen. Oh, I got a pain in my body. God got me. I never understood. And we're done. I promise we're done. Let's stand. I never understood growing up why, why Apostle, why he would always say, whenever he had a pain in his body or something going on, he would always say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, I, I thank you. Hallelujah. Or he would get up out the car for a long time. Oh, God, I thank you. Just get out the car. Thank you, Lord. I'm like, why is he saying thank you all the time? Oh, Lord, I thank you. You come in the house from, 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 from all day, being at work, out and about. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord. Man, look here. And that was thanks in the world. But I had to understand that instead of him saying, ouch, oh, I'm hurting, oh, this is going on. His confession was in replacement of saying, ouch, in replacement of saying, oh, it's been a bad day, in replacement of saying, oh, well, it is what it is. His confession was Jesus. Lord, I thank you. When they ask you at your bank, well, how you gonna take care of this? Oh, you know, well, listen, you you may not know, but you know, every time I had an issue before, God always made a way. So you can say it however you want to say it, but as soon as you open up your mouth in front of unbelievers, 
faith thing in Jesus. That's what they talking about. Oh, okay, okay. I, I see we got us another Christian. But that's why y'all gonna stay up because I'm with your bank. That's why you're not get that's why you're not gonna get fired as a realtor because I'm living in one of your houses. That's why this job and this school not gonna go down because I'm attending it. How you gonna finish that paper? You only got two hours left to finish it. Oh, God has done it for me before, so I know he got me now. I need you to open up your mouth and say, God, change my faith language. Yeah, God changed my faith language. When he changes, in other words, when God changes your language, you'll find yourself talking more about him than the issue. I'm going to say it again and we're done. The more that God changes our faith language, we will find ourselves talking more about him than we would everything else. Can I tell us that many of us, we have been living, some of us have been living in a byproduct of what we spoke. You do remember that the Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. I dare you for the rest of this month to talk about nobody but Jesus. Let me say this. I believe in God that before the end of the month, Amen. I will have new employment. Amen. Now, I'm not worried because in order for that to happen, I have to put in two weeks by this Friday. But what that tells me is the fact that it's Thursday tomorrow and then Friday the next day tells me that God still got 48 hours. God still got 48 hours. I hit my mind so I said God still has 48 hours. That's my faith language. How you gonna get the job? Oh well, God allowed me to get this one, so I know He's gonna make way for me to get the next one. Yeah. See, it's not enough to just say I'm a Christian, but what comes out your mouth has to say Christian. Right. Yeah. What comes out of our mouth has to say that I believe in a higher power and His name is wonderful. Yeah. Counselor. Yeah. Oh God, if we had a, if we had two more minutes, I would move right there. Mighty God. Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight. I'll save it for another day. I'll save all that hoop because I got some hoop in me. I ain't let it out in a while, but. But Father, we thank you tonight. God, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, God, I, 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 I believe that what you had me to say tonight. I believe that it was a blessing to us. I believe that you got the glory. And God, I ask your God to not allow what was said tonight. Don't let it leave our minds. Don't let it leave our spirits. But God, let us meditate on it. Let it stay in our hearts and minds. Let it stay in our spirit, even as we leave this place. Even as we go to our vehicles and go home and go about our endeavors. God, I ask you to cover us in your book, cover our homes and vehicles. God, watch over us and protect us. And God, we just thank you and we praise you. We be ever so careful to give your name the glory, honor, and praise. That's to your name. And it is your son, Jesus' name. We do pray to everybody's city. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. The next time we'll be live will be this Sunday. Amen. Amen. So God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.